What's up? Juno here. And today is actually May 22nd when I'm filming this video, and a lot of people have been making videos talking about this whole rapture business, and it's been getting a lot of media attention. In my subscription box, for example, on May 21st and May 20th even, it was full of videos talking about this whole situation, that and Draw Muhammad Day, but fuck that noise. And I've also seen a lot of news stories from various news outlets, some more legitimate than others, and I will post links to them below so you can check them out for yourself. And something that's been very interesting about this is a lot of these across all these news outlets and news organizations and websites and stuff like that, they have all been kind of staying consistent with their story, and they've been very critical, even ones that are for or more leaning towards Christianity, very critical of the claims that Harold Camping made about the end of the world. And I, I find that to be refreshing, seeing that other religious outlets are actually criticizing this guy for his somewhat false prediction about the end of the world. And what I find to be sad is that a lot of people actually gave money to this guy for this cause because they believed him. I was watching a video earlier in the week. I can't remember exactly who it was by. If I do, I will post it in the description box as well. But they talked about how there was a particular family who believed the claim that Camping was making about May 21st, the rapture, stuff like that. They've gotten rid of all their money, quit their jobs, sold their possessions, stuff like that, because they truly believe that they're going to be raptured up, or they were going to be raptured up on May 21st. And the thing is, is the woman in the family was actually pregnant with another child. They had one child already, and there was another one on the way. And that makes me think, it's like, really? You people are going to believe in this stuff, and you're bringing children in this world? That's a little scary. But that's not the most ridiculous story I've heard surrounding this whole rapture May 21st thing. There was a story probably about a month or two ago about a woman in Palmdale who attempted to kill her daughters by slitting their throats to avoid the tribulation times or the time I guess between the rapture and when the supposed god of the Christian religion is to destroy the world or whatever. So she was going to kill them in a way to I guess save them. Now that's insanity, and these people, again, are raising children, which to me is shocking and scary. But I'm not going to sit here and rip on the people who took this advice literally, because maybe they were misled, maybe they are not very bright, maybe they don't know how to think critically, maybe they truly thought this guy was being genuine. But maybe a lot of these people don't realize that he had a prediction, and he even wrote a book about this, about 1994, and how the world was supposedly going to end in 1994. Now, he bases his predictions off some sort of biblical math regarding dates and stuff like that. Now, you can't really predict, or you can't use the Bible as a good way of predicting things, because its track record isn't the greatest in the world. But a lot of literal Bible believers would disagree with that point because they think it's the truest book of all time and it's the only book you need even though it's full of things that are vile and disgusting. But to them, they seem to think that, well, it's written in the Bible and it's inspired word or it was written by God, some of them believe. That means it's good. But even depicted within its own text, it shows the God of the Christian religion being a pretty violent, vicious being of sorts, and I don't understand why anyone would want to share this with children or take that as true. Why would you want to be subservient to a being that overtly hates your guts if the Bible is to be believed? That makes very little sense to me, but apparently some people don't see how that's bad or how that can just kind of destroy your morale, I would think. But you know, it's kind of it's kind of weird. I, I don't understand how, and especially something that I found to be kind of refreshing yet again is there's been more moderate or more, I guess, open-minded or, I guess, more sane Christians out there that have said that Harold Camping is a fucking idiot, and I don't fucking blame them. I agree with them. He is a fucking idiot, and anyone else who has these doomsday predictions without any real empirical evidence, and there's no data to back up their claims except their arbitrary math or trying to find a connection, kind of like how conspiracy theorists do, there's a lot of parallels between conspiracy 
conspiracy theories and religion, which I find to be fascinating. But, you know, conspiracy theorists, when they're trying to prove their point, will reach at a few facts that and try to connect them in some way to make them make sense to the average gullible person that will probably believe them even though when you really take a broader look at it or examine all the evidence it'll be pretty obvious that what they're making up here is absolute bullshit but something that's very interesting is this family radio network or whatever that he's built. Well, actually, Harold Camping was a civil engineer. He graduated from Berkeley, and then he, after, in the 1970s, he sold his construction business to do this radio station, and it claims it's a non-profit. Apparently, it has $120 million in value or something with it, and Harold Camping spent $100 million on this advertising campaign that appeared in, like, I guess, 80 cities around the country, which is ridiculous. But I want to know, and I'm curious to know, how much of this money came from contributors. And I'm going to play you a clip from his radio show and listen to his reaction to the caller who calls in. But shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yes. Hey, I just wanted to, uh, I've been listening to you. I know there's a lot of people, older people, that have been to believe what you teach about the world ending on May the 21st. 2011, that there's uh, quite a few people, older people and people like that, that have uh, been taking their life savings out and sending it to your radio station. I was wondering uh, if uh, on May the 22nd, do they get a refund? Well, the fact is, we don't ask anybody it's up to them why they, they do excuse it. me, what they are giving. We're not telling anybody what they are to give. And let each one uh, let each one make their own decisions on those matters. But thank Can you. Can I say something else? Yes. Okay. I just want to say that uh, you don't want to know. You don't want to trick anybody. So on May the twenty second, they should get their money back. It's up to them if they want to give excuse it. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. May twenty second will be judgment. The second day of judgment day. Well, uh, 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 <laughs> we don't know what, how, what's going to happen uh, to Family Radio on that first day or to, any, to the banks or anybody else. We have no idea at all that it's going to be horrible. It's going to be a horror story that we absolutely cannot conceive of. Millions of people will die on that day and every day thereafter. And uh, it's... it's uh, uh, this this kind of conversation of what what what, what will we do uh, the next day you know, that doesn't make it's nonsense it's utter nonsense because it is going to happen this is what the Bible teaches we don't we we don't this is not not something where yeah yeah there's a tiny 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 chance it might happen it is going to happen so as you see. Mr. Camping doesn't like getting called out on his bullshit, and it seems like he's pretty convinced that, well, of course, this was recorded before May 21st, and he's very much convinced that May 22nd, well, tell you what, I've got my Twitter feed open right here, and let me see, I've, I follow a lot of news networks, let me see, is there anything on here about millions of people dying? Nope. No stories of it yet. And it's kind of interesting to see that he doesn't plan on, it seems like, paying back any of the money. Well, if you donated thousands of dollars to this guy, you should ask for your money back. If he won't give it back, you should sue him. You should definitely sue him because he has swindled you. He has scammed you out of your money. And in some of the news stories that I'm going to post links to, you can see that there are people out there who gave this guy hundreds of thousands of dollars. And now, where are they? They have no more life savings. They've quit their job, some of them. They've, they've bought into this hook, line, and sinker. And where are they now? What's going to happen now? And in the various news stories, they've tried to reach out to Harold Camping for comment now that nothing has happened. Don't hear a peep. Now, what's interesting, in the L.A. Times article that I'm posting, apparently one of Harold Camping's daughters 
was contacted by him and he was convinced that it was still going to happen by midnight on May 21st, or I guess that would be May 22nd. Nothing. So obviously, he has lied. He has lied and he should be called out on his bullshit. And that's what I'm doing now. It's very sad to see people get away with these overt scams like this. It's crazy. And you've driven people nuts. I mean, literally, with the examples that I listed before, you have people buying this. I, I've seen some of the RVs driving around where I live. Well, not so much where I live, but where I work. And I just laughed. I laughed my ass off because I was like, you've got to be kidding me. And what's even more shocking about this is I would probably expect something of this nature or a preacher or a pastor or some sort of religious nutcase to be doing this in some Bible Belt state. But no, Harold Camping is based in the San Francisco Bay Area, which I, I just find that kind of shocking that this would get so much traction in the state of California. But you see, the thing is, is if you want to sue to get your money back, you better do it soon because Harold Camping's not going to be alive probably very much longer. He's, he's just not. Because he's 89 years old, so you better get on it. He's kind of on borrowed time as it is right now. But what's funny is I have a story open right on my computer right now, and it's talking about this whole situation and the failed prediction and stuff like that. And apparently none of his family members take his predictions seriously, which I find that to be hilarious. He's got like seven children and a whole bunch of grandchildren and stuff like that, and apparently only his wife takes him seriously with these predictions. Well, apparently a bunch of other gullible individuals take him seriously and give him money as well, but that's just pretty fucking hilarious to me, if you ask me. How can you take him seriously? But that's just that's just very telling that your immediate family doesn't even take you seriously. It's like showing that you're senile. Give it up. But what do you think? I, I mean, I'm guessing most of my audience is probably in agreement with beliefs like this, that they're pretty silly and stupid, and only idiots and gullible individuals who don't do their research would probably buy into it. But let me know in the comments or post a video response or whatever. You can check out the various news stories that I'll have posted below and get your balanced perspective or somewhat balanced perspective. Or it, it's, it's kind of interesting to me. I was very shocked to see a lot of consistency even between the religion neutral sort of sources and the more pro-Christian sources that I found on this whole subject. I, I was not expecting that. But it also it seems like a lot of Christians are pissed off and you know, saying that he's misleading people and stuff like that. Well, technically, if you're really going to get down to it, it's like, well, it's the whole no true Scotsman fallacy, because who's a true Christian? There is no such thing as a true Christian. But, uh, yeah, I don't want to ramble on too long about, you know, little inconsistencies or whatever. But anyway, do your part. Blaspheme daily.